Okay, today we're going to be looking at uh, Suzanne's composition. You see I'm beaming in onto one of Suzanne's famous uh, still lives. We're going to be looking at that and the different facets of composition. Okay, we're beaming now into uh, the first facet of composition, which is looking at shapes. Now, you can see here, this composition has been broken up into different types of shapes. You've got large, medium and small. That always makes up good composition. Go across here, if the shapes are the same, we've got two jugs and the uh, plate there, they will kind of counterbalance each other out. You've got to have a variety of large, medium and small, also filling up the positive space, getting rid of any negative space there, so the objects have got a nice balance. Next we'll go on to the objects, as you can see here, different directions where they lean. You can see in here Suzanne's got the jug slightly to the left, leaning with the plate, He's counteracting that with some of the other objects uh, which are leaning to the right. So there's a balance there in terms of the direction of the lean on objects. In this particular composition I've drawn here, they were all upright. One's slightly leaning to the right there, but then again you can see that there's no kind of balance of leaning to the left, leaning to the right, leaning forward, leaning backwards. Okay, go down to the third facet, which is looking at balance of planes. Now these planes here with the, with the actual, um, you can see the plate is moving backwards. The plane is going right to the left there. The other uh, set of uh, oranges or apples there uh, is leaning the other way. The plane is going backwards towards the right. The other one's going to the left. You can see now if I don't do that and just have the planes without any direction at all, you can see on here you eliminate the use of planes in your composition, which is a bad thing. Down to the fourth aspect, this is tension in the composition. You see here that you can either use colour to bring composition together, or, or objects. I mean, in, in this instance, you can see the red uh, of the apple on the left there in the bowl, and I've added red to the other apples to the right and there's a tension there, which we call tension composition. One of the apples seems to want to get towards the other apple. If you look conversely over here, where we don't have the red apple, the composition is right-sided because there's no tension there. There's no apple which is red on one side of the composition pulling your eye towards the other one as we have in the diagram here. Uh, so this is a very important facet when you compose a picture, it allows you to use a large area and just use small shapes which are similar one side to the other or small colours. Uh, so if you've got this composition, it's full of greens, the red on one side and the tiny red on the other will pull your eye across. Uh, so that's very important to use. I mean, Constable used that a lot in his composition, Cezanne used it a lot. And it's a very, very good tool to pull your eye across the composition. Okay, next one we're looking at here is perspective in the composition. You can see here the planes of the uh, plates are going to different vanishing points. You can see there to the left, one's going further out, and then to the right, down the bottom there, the perspective lines will kind of go to a different converging point. So you're not getting a hole through the composition where it's almost like a railway track where everything goes to one point and kind of cuts up the picture plane, as Suzanne would have said, which is what we've got here in the kind of drawing I've done. All of the perspective points are going to one point, cutting through the composition, uh, and that leads to bad composition. See Suzanne, what he's done, he's had various vanishing points. He might have invented that, it might not have actually worked in real life, but he's cutting away from cutting up the picture plane, rather than here, you've got kind of like a a hole right through the middle of the composition which doesn't lead to balanced shapes. Okay, now we go down to geometric composition across here. We've got Cezanne here. Sometimes you can find in compositions various kind of shapes, uh, invisible shapes. As we can see here, there's a triangle going from the bottom of the table up to the top and around. Uh, you can also find some kind of circular motions with the plates, etc. 
and that's very good in terms of producing a compositional symmetrical uh, framework. On my one, the one I've done here, I haven't included that. And as you can see there, there's no vision there of the edge of the table. I've just made it quite flat, so you don't get that shape going back to produce a triangular uh, geometric invisible shape because I haven't included the edge of the table. So there, you've nullified in terms of uh, general geometric composition. And we go up again here. We're going to be looking here at rhythmic shapes. Again, a kind of invisible sense you get. Uh, you can see some of the objects there have been pulled around through the fact that the shapes are curvaceous uh, and that leads to an invisible kind of rhythmic uh, feel for the composition going there. I haven't used any rhythmic kind of shapes there. Maybe you can look at the plate being one, but because I've taken away some of the nice curves in the cloth at the bottom there, which lend, actually on the right there, lends itself to invisible rhythmic curves in the composition. Your eye will follow them around naturally. This doesn't happen on that one. Okay, that's bad composition in that sense. And now we go back to the other facet composition, the seventh one, which is making your drawings look modelled. We've done quite a lot of that actually, in terms of the course so far. Very, very important to make sure you get your contour lines correct, that the uh, elements in the composition are three-dimensional. We've done a lot of work on looking at contour lines and tiles uh, in our work. And here, obviously, I've created a bad drawing compositionally where I haven't used the contour lines effectively. You can see on the oranges there, the lines just gone straight across, flat rather than curvaceous. As you can see there, the proper way to do it, following the form. And that, obviously, you can see on the jug, the lines are not curved, they're straight, so it's lean flat composition, which obviously is poor. It doesn't lead to modelled uh, drawings. Finally, we go down to tone in the composition. A good tonal range is essential. You can see here we've got medium, dark and light tone. Medium, light, medium, dark as well. On this Cezanne, he always had a balance of tone. He might have done that using colours, complementary colours, as opposed to tone itself, but always there was that balance. If you look at my wrong drawing here, so to speak, limited tone, you've got slightly dark, light, no medium dark, hardly any medium light, and you can see the balance compared to the Cezanne one is, is not there. Good composition has a variety of different tones. Not always possible, I mean if you're drawing a snow scene or a darkened room for instance, you'll only have a certain amount of tones, but you can kind of vary that by looking at the contrast between complementary colour or a best case scenario you can always try to get as many different uh, tonal, tonal objects into your compositions to make that balance correct. Now, in your work, you should be looking to produce uh, all those eight facets. It's not always possible in every single piece to include all of them, but there are elements out of the eight which are essential. You know, the shape's very important, the tonal range, the, the obviously the contour lines, Tension can be put in, as we've mentioned, with the colours of the objects and the size of the objects. The tilt can be always mastered, so it's not all just all the objects upright. Uh, and all of these uh, basic uh, facets of composition should be applied into your work, which will give you stronger compositional balance in your work.